Good morning to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com. It is Thursday, the 29th of September, 2022. Morning update for you before we hit the road again. Got a few hours sleep last night here in Orlando. Now we need to talk about what happens after Florida, obviously for Southwest Florida. Today is day one of, for many people, a changed world, a very devastating event there with the landfall of um, Ian yesterday. Now we will focus on the impacts to the Carolinas. Um, that's the most area that this will impact. And it's certainly Georgia too, but the main focus is gonna be the Carolinas and especially South Carolina. So let's get into it, show you what we've got here as I try to trudge through this. <clears throat> this early morning sun just starting to come up here in the Orlando area where I still am. All right, so the 5 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center Ian did drop just below hurricane intensity. Wind is 65 miles per hour, pressure is 986, and it's just about back out over the water now. I'll show you in just a minute on a zoomed in tracking map, uh, our interactive map where it's located. I want to focus real quick on the impacts coming up. Um, first of all, let's just go ahead and look at their map real quick, the National Hurricane Center map. That is not a mistake. That is the tropical storm force wind field enormous. This kind of reminds me of Hurricane Sandy uh, once it transitioned over to sort of that Superstorm Sandy or whatever the moniker was. Just a huge, huge wind field. This is the next several days forecast area and hiding right in here. You can't see it, but there's sort of a pink color in there. There's a hurricane watch up and for good reason. And we'll zoom in on where this is going to make landfall potentially uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, in just a moment on our interactive map. But the impacts though, that's what I want to talk about. Rainfall that has been and will continue to be a problem, although it is going to start to abate. But make no mistake, the rain has left behind a lot of water through this area that still has to move around. Rivers are going to rise. That's going to be a really big problem. Flooding along parts of the St. John's River especially and the other areas. Be sure to go to weather.gov, weather.gov, Put in your zip code and there will be information in there. It'll say like flood warning or river flood warning, anything in red. Uh, but the National Weather Service has really, really good info about that. So be sure to check that in Florida. And then all of that heavy rain over a pretty wide swath, several inches of it potentially for the Carolinas there as Ian starts to move uh, towards the southeast coast after getting back out over the very warm Atlantic. Storm surge is going to be a problem. Uh, it is still a problem here on the southwest coast of Florida, believe it or not, because there's still just general onshore flow into that big old circulation of the tropical storm. That will start to lessen down here, um, and then rescues and everything else can really start to commence as that starts to abate. Uh, but farther to the north here, the surge will become more problematic in the areas where you have this concave shape to the coast and then all the way up here towards South Carolina and even North Carolina to Cape Lookout, uh, maybe one to three feet, especially with that broad onshore flow, that's just going to pile up the water, beach erosion, uh, some pretty rough surf out there. The surfers, please be very careful out there. This will kick up some waves, but I don't think they're going to be very clean. I don't know much about surfing, um, but it's not going to be the best of conditions. And then my main concern up here, I'll try to use this red here to highlight this, is going to be near the Charleston Harbor area. And I think that's where we could see, uh, I mean, it's looking like three to five feet right now. I think that's going to go up just based on my experience, uh, especially if this comes in right there just south of Charleston and you focus that right front quadrant. I'm going to show you the GFS graphics in a minute. Um, I think it could be higher, and we'll wait and see. That's the Hurricane Center's call. I'm going to be in touch with them, their storm surge unit. We collaborate a lot, and um, we'll, uh, we'll be ready. We're going to cover it. We're going to have several cameras we're going to put there. I'll talk about that in a minute, too, but uh, the surge potential for Charleston Harbor and elsewhere. It's not just Charleston, Merle's Inlet, any of those areas where you have the onshore flow and you see storm surge from past events, uh, you know, you know the drill, saltwater flooding, 
very incessant, very damaging, and it is coming across a pretty wide swath of the southeast coast as the legacy of Ian continues here this Thursday morning. The circulation, enormous, very, very large, very much intact. Don't let the fact that it is a tropical storm fool you. Uh, that's just a name that is given to the system. That's a classification. The impacts are still very substantial. I've seen a few people already tagging me on Twitter that they are getting hammered in the area. I mean, look at that band uh, going into Daytona Beach right now and vicinity uh, just south of Daytona. So the I-95 corridor here, we're going to be on it in the next few hours. Hopefully this will move off even more so. But it's a slow mover, still kind of a slow mover. So this I-95 corridor uh, is nasty. Any truckers, please be careful. High-profile vehicles, anybody out there, just take it easy. But all of this is going to move out into the Atlantic, the center of circulation right here. In just a matter of hours, it's going to be out over the water. And water temperatures out here are still very warm, 29 Celsius or so. That's plenty, plenty warm. We're talking um, 84, something like that, 83, 84 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll look at that more in detail in a moment. First, I just want to go and see which of our camera systems may or may not be running right now. Some of them have been picked up, and we need to take these off the map, and we'll do that later today. Um, our colleague Marcel grabbed the camera system from Arcadia and our weather station and camera system in the Port Charlotte area. We really appreciate that. So these two right here, I'll just kind of put X's through them. Those have already been collected uh, from Marcel. We really appreciate that. And that gives us more arsenal for Charleston uh, and maybe even Merle's Inlet. We'll wait and see. We, we, I think we're going to have five cameras now that we can place up uh, in South Carolina and especially the Charleston area. So let's see what else might be still alive down here. Some of these came back on last night. Um, the network, we use Verizon to stream all of our stuff and they were having issues yesterday. Not their fault. Category almost five hurricane. Can't blame them. Terrestrial networks are vulnerable, period. Uh, but it was weird because after the hurricane moved through, uh, we started getting our signals back. It was very strange. And the one down here, I think it's still dead. Yeah, um, that's fine. I'm going to post some clips from it on our Nest account. Uh, that's what we use is these Nest cams. Uh, but it came back. Uh, that was interesting to see that. Let's see if anything else is sort of chiming in down here. Sorry, let me get that to go away and get my pointer back. There we go. Zoom in a little bit here. I believe the one on the bridge uh, was running the camera there. We can just now see the first light coming up. Um, don't see much out there. There's our weather station, and we'll start collecting this equipment uh, in the coming days. we got people that are going to help us do that. How about downtown? Let's see. Nope, that one's already knocked off. Uh, maybe the battery finally ran out. Cape Coral's dead. This is no surprise. I mean, Captiva ch chimed in last night, by the way. We saw it for a little bit. It was just dark out there, obviously. But, uh, yeah, they're pretty much all done for now, and that is that. So, I mean, this area really got hit hard, as you well know. Uh, there'll be a lot of news coverage on it, a lot of recovery efforts underway, uh, all the way down to Naples, too, Collier County, and even down in the Keys. Uh, just a damaging, far-reaching impact here from what was Hurricane Ian, now Tropical Storm, but is going to intensify again. I'm, I am very certain of it. I have a very high confidence myself. My opinion, this is not an official forecast from the Hurricane Center, this becomes a hurricane again. I do believe so. The models generally indicate it. It has been an overachiever the entire time, so why quit now? So the official forecast takes it out over the water and then swings it back in just to the south of Charleston, which is right here. And we've got some pretty savvy folks up there in that area. And you know, it is not a little circle with an S. It is much larger, and that onshore flow, that perpendicular strike to the coastline is going to funnel the water right into the harbor and all along this area, even up Georgetown up here and the concave shape through Long Bay, the beaches of Brunswick County, North Carolina, there could be some overwash, some tidal flooding. Um, so this is going to be a big problem. It really will. I think we could see 
some fairly significant flooding, especially in the Charleston Battery area. And so that's where our plans will be focused. We're going to head down here. There's the battery right there. We'll put some cameras around there and then maybe something up to the north. Like I said, we know of a few spots based on past experiences. Uh, Matthew, certainly one of those. Uh, Merle's Inlet, we might put something there as well. Um, what else do we got? Yeah, we got to look at the models. Sorry, not done yet. So GFS, the 6Z run, so this is still uh, rendering out, if you will. It's, it's coming in now, so this is very, very fresh. Uh, this is what it shows. This is where Ian is located right now, and it's got the pressure pretty much right on. It's actually a little, uh, looks like it says 988. Hurricane Center says 986, so the GFS is just a tad off on the high side for what it's worth. This is 10 meter wind, all right? Very important to realize that. So this is the wind where most of us live and exist. 10 meters, that's about 30 feet. Most of our houses, you know, a couple stories at the most. Um, so yeah, 10 meters, that's where we live. This isn't 5,000 feet up. This is 10 meters. Look at these onshore flow winds right here, that long fetch blowing into Florida. We don't want to ignore Florida. We just don't have time to stop in the Jacksonville area, the beaches, etc. We got to get up to Charleston. So that's the reason we're going to just kind of bypass Florida uh, duty calls, so to speak. And I know that Charleston area very, very well. But look what happens here. This is now, this is when Ian gets back out over the water. We start to see those 50 knot plus winds very quickly. The pressure starts to drop. We get hurricane force winds on the back very quickly. It's out over that warm Gulf Stream. Not a surprise at all to me. And then it meanders its way up there, finally making landfall. That is pretty darn close to where the Hurricane Center has it. And then look, uh, close to hurricane force wind at 10 meters just north of Charleston. That would be near Georgetown. Um, and this could focus right into Charleston, especially if the center passes just to the southwest of Charleston. You're going to funnel that wind into the harbor from an intensifying potential hurricane. So don't think, well, it's not, I mean, again, Charleston people know, but reminding you, don't look at this as it's just a category one. What's the big deal? Um, well, tune in tomorrow afternoon to our cameras and we'll show you what the big deal is. And, and I mean that it's going to be impactful and look at the wind. The wind is going to spread out all over this area. Tropical storm force winds all the way up into the Piedmont of North Carolina and South Carolina. Some of those oranges in there, 10 meters up, mid 30s. Those are 30 knots. So, you know, 35, 40, 45 mile per hour wind by tomorrow afternoon. That is problematic for people in the area. Absolutely. And then it moves inland from there and begins to die out finally. Looks like it, it's kind of like Hugo. Except hopefully, well, I think it'll be way less intense, but Hugo took a track about just like that. Um, ironically, uh, it was about September 22nd, obviously a little earlier, but a very interesting track there, similar to what Hugo did. Finally, the Euro from the overnight run, very, very similar to the GFS. Uh, and it gets it a little bit stronger there and a little bit more to the south than where the GFS has. But the same kind of results, the onshore flow there, really piling the water up along the South Carolina coast, especially. But, you know, even onshore flow up here, the overall pressure gradient, high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south, a big wind swath all the way down the coast, high surf advisories, coastal flooding issues, onshore flow, all of it, a very impactful event when all is said and done. And then the other part of this real quick, the water temperatures, like I was talking about, as soon as this gets out over the Gulf Stream here, 29 Celsius, plenty warm enough. Don't let that fool you. Plenty of energy. That water is also moving. In fact, look right in here, just a little stripe right there of slightly warmer water temperatures. And then the fact that it's the Gulf Stream and that water is moving, you do have high upper ocean heat content values as well. And then finally, off the coast, of the Carolinas. There's Charleston right there, 27 degrees right offshore Celsius. Uh, most of science is in metric, by the way. 26 Celsius right up against the coast. So just warm enough right at the coast, but it won't matter. You have 28 and 29 
Again, 82, 83, almost 84 Fahrenheit. Plenty of energy for Ian to take advantage of. My prediction is this gets back to maybe 85 miles per hour. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and uh, I would expect a hurricane. That's why the hurricane watch is up. It is possible. So it is certainly within the realm of possibility down there uh, along the low country of South Carolina. All right, let me get this online for you all. And uh, we're going to hit the road. We will have the live vehicle cam running in just a few hours. And um, the remote camera systems will be up this after, well, late this afternoon, this evening. And all of that will be available over on the Hurricane Track Insider site through our Patreon crowdfunding support system. You know all about that by now. And uh, if you're new to it, check it out. And if you've been a member for a while, you know what's coming. You know what we're getting ready to do. And uh, we'll do it to the best of our ability. You guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks for tuning in to me. I'm Mark Suddeth, Hurricane Track. I'll be back with you with another update this evening from Charleston, South Carolina.